everybody welcome back welcome to not all bobby pins are created equal i've been talking about this for two weeks and i know that a lot of you have been um waiting on this conversation so um adventures of the bobby pen i have want to introduce to you first of all all of the different types of bobby pins that there are hi lori thanks for joining me thank you for letting me know that you're on the other end Sometimes it doesn't go through too fast. So, um, the bobby pin. One thing that I want to share with you about the bobby pin, it's actually been around since 1920. And um, the inventor of the bobby pin is Lucas Marcus. And the reason why the bobby pin was invented was for the bob hairstyle. Because back in the 1920s, all the women wore really, really, really long hair and nobody would dare get their hair cut because that was not the thing to do in that time period. So what they would actually do is they would take their hair like this and they would twist it like this in different types of pin curls and then Lucas Marcus invented the bobby pin to pin it. And so all of these women that you see pictures of from the 1920s that have short hair, actually their hair is long. So I'm going to show you a picture because I, I think it's so interesting of these women from the 1920s that people think had short hair, but they actually had long hair. So let's see if you guys can see that. See the difference in her hair? That's actually how long her hair is, and that's with bobby pins. Here's another one, and here's another one. So I thought that that was a really interesting tidbit because a lot of people think that the word bobby pin um, comes from the shape of the pin, and it actually doesn't. It comes from the hairstyle, which was the bob. And the reason why people think it comes from the shape, let me use a light colored bobby pin for you so you all can see is because it has several waves in it. So what most people think, think is that when you put a bobby pin in, you put it in and you move it up and down and it seals it. And you can do that if you want to. That's not where the, what the name was created for. And there's actually other ways to put these in your hair to hold your hairstyles in place. So um, what I'm going to do now, I know that when I show this to you, it's actually going to be backwards, but this is just going to give you a gist of what's on the market when you go shopping for bobby pins because it's so important in holding your hairstyle in. Whether your hair is thin or thick, I'm going to share with you what bobby pins to use on your texture of hair and how to put them in. So, first of all, these two bobby pins up here, these bo those bobby pins are like from Walmart, the dollar store, and they were very, very easy to bend. And I'm going to show you. They come usually in little slits like this, and I can move it like that. If you can move a bobby pin that easy, it's not going to serve too much of a purpose in your hair. Not only that, but when you look at the tip, the tip of the bobby pin, it's barely existing, and the, the, um, the little curves that are in the bobby pin, they're very, very slight. So there are four curves in this one. There are, how many are in this one? Two. There's only two curves in that one, and there's barely no tip. So here is a professional grade bobby pin. Look how big the tips are. This actually has six curves. This has no curves for a reason. I'm going to share that with you. And this has one. But look at the tips. And I could barely get that to bend. So it's safe to say that a professional grade bobby pin is going to hold your hairstyle in better. Um, Sally's Beauty Supply does have um, some pretty, pretty nice bobby pins. But what you want to look at is the tip. And you want to count and see how many curves are in there. Some bobby pins only have three. So now the bobby pin that you see here that's just straight and those come really really long. See if I had one here. 
that's actually good for somebody with really, really thick hair. And Nikki Funk, I just saw that you joined in. It just came across to me. Someone like you, that bobby pin would be great for your hair. Um, they come in rubber coating form. They also come in metal and they come in rust resistant. I love the rubber coated. However, if you have metal bobby pins, you can spray them with a dry shampoo or the rubber ones. The dry shampoo will adhere to your bobby pin and will actually stick in your hair better. So lay your bobby pins out, spray them, and then put your hairstyle in. Another way to get your bobby pins to stay in your hair is to make sure your hair isn't too soft. So my hair, again today, I have a density building spray in my hair, something for it to stick to. If you have very fine hair, very soft hair, and you go to put the bobby pin in, it's going to slip. So put something in there, even if it's a light hairspray, just something to give it some texture for the bobby pin to adhere to. Um, so there are different colors, and I think it's probably pretty, pretty much common sense. You want to hide them. You have dark hair, you use dark bobby pins. You have light hair, you use light. There's actually four different colors. These are the bobby pins that I like. These are my favorite. They're called Metagrip Premium Bobby Pins, and they come in a container like this. I am going to do my hair for you with this bobby pin so that you can see how I put it in. If I use a dark bobby pin, you're not going to see it because it hides completely in my hair and it's unidentifiable. Um, you definitely want to get rust resistant if you choose to get metal because especially when you have your hair wet, you put that bobby pin in, you just you don't want that in your hair. Okay, so... Here's what we're going to do. I think we're going to start with just the simple braid because I see a lot of girls that they take the side of their hair, they put this cute little braid in, and they put a bobby pin here. It's, it's tacky. It just it looks really, really bad, and it's such a simple thing to do. So I want to share with you how to do that. Now, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not going to get into a French braid or anything like that. But I'm just going to braid a piece of hair here, just like all you normal teens do. Or if you're a mom watching who has kids, you're trying to grow her bangs out and you're looking for a way to do it. So here's what we're going to do. While I do this, ladies, don't forget to share my video because I give away prizes for those who share. And um, I actually, we did a drawing before the video because I was actually a couple of minutes late because I was working. And Lori Bory, if you're on the other side, you um, won a dark circle color corrector for sharing my past two videos. So thank you so much. And like and share this page too, guys. And subscribe to my YouTube channel because when you do both and you let me know, I do drawings for that too. Now, on my YouTube channel, I do have the faux, the faux bob. So the picture I showed you of the ladies from the 1920s that have their hair rolled and pinned with bobby pins, I did that a couple of years ago, and you can see how to do that yourself on my YouTube channel. So I am just going to... Um, congratulations, Lori. Okay, so you have this simple braid. Now, you have your choice to keep that braid on top or you can pick a piece of hair up like this, flip it over, and you can hide it and then put that down. It's really, really whatever you prefer. Whenever I braid my hair, that's actually what I do because I like to hide it, but for the sake of you seeing how to put these bobby pins in, I'm going to put it on top. So we're going to stop the braid here. Let me get a gold bobby pin. So here's what we're going to do. Here's a bobby pin. The bottom is long, the top is short. You are going to turn the bobby pin upside down. The bobby pin is going to go in in this direction, this way, and then you're going to flip it and push it in. Okay, so you ready? 
we're going to take the bobby pin, we're going to flip it this way, and we're going to push it in. And look, it's gold. You can't even see the gold. And that's how you hide it. So you could put several of those braids in your hair or twists, put your bobby pin in and flip it. I mean, imagine this, girls. You got your bathing suit on. You're at the beach. Everybody's got that messy bun going on, which is super cute. It's the style, and I wear a messy bun a lot, but I'm sick of it. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of it. Now, when you're outside, you're in the humidity, and all of your hair is just a frizzy mess. When this is tailored, just this part, and the rest of this is frizzy, you still look put together, and it still looks beautiful. It really, really does. So I'm going to do a couple twists, and I'm going to show you how to do twists, because if you're a person watching um, Cottage Clippings, and you don't know how to do a braid, I'm going to do a twist, and we're going to put the bobby pin in the same way. Again, if you are just tuning in, I am Michelle Morton with Cottage Clippings. I do have a Facebook page, so you can go to my Facebook page, view all my tutorials. You can see all of my work, and I also have a YouTube channel as well that has a lot more on it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just twist the hair. Keep twisting like that. Now, again, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold the bobby pin upside down, and we're going to insert it upside down in this direction, away from you. Then you're going to flip it and push it in. So, just like that. So, imagine you ladies could do this, or you girls, you can put these twists all the way across your head. It's very bohemian looking. It looks so super cute with sundresses. Um, and you can make them all kinds of ways. They don't have to be perfect. Just put a bunch of twists all the way back and then slide your bobby pins in and then you're set. I didn't coat these because they're professional grade and I didn't need to coat them. But if you're at home right now and you want to try this, do what I told, told you. Put a little bit of hairspray in your hair. Spray your bobby pins with a little bit of a, um, like a dry shampoo. If you do not have a dry shampoo, Spray baby powder, spray hairspray over it, and then you have your problem solved. Okay. Let's see. I just want to make sure I touched on everything. I actually wrote notes. Okay, so one thing I want to teach you. So I taught you how to flip the bobby pin. Do you guys all got that? You guys all understand how to flip it. So you're going to put it in the opposite direction, flip it, and turn it around. There's one other way to make bobby pins secure and it's to crisscross them now if you go on um what was i on i was i did some kind of search and i wanted to see styles with bobby pins and people actually had their hair pulled to the side like this i couldn't believe i saw this they had their hair pulled to the side like this they had one bobby pin go this way and then they had Another bobby pin, go this way. Okay, now that's called locking your bobby pins. The only time, now that's meant to be hidden, everybody. That's not something that's supposed to be seen. I see people walking around, they pull their hair back and they crisscross it here. It's tacky. It, it just is tacky. So this is meant to be hidden. If you're a person who's going to do like that faux bob that I was sharing with you about from the 1920s and you're hiding the bobby pins underneath, that's when you would do crisscross. Or the old-fashioned French twists where you pulled all the hair over, pinned it, pulled this hair over, pinned it. You would crisscross your bobby pins and it makes them extra tight and extra sealed. So I hope that this video finds you having one amazing night. I love sharing things with you. And um, next Wednesday, you're going to want to join me because we are going to do a tutorial on color theory and color imaging and reflective, reflective lighting so that you know what kind of eyeshadow to use. When you go to the store and you're shopping for clothes, you breeze in and out of those stores because you'll look at a rack and you'll say, I can't wear that color, I can't wear that color. Wow, that's a great sale, but it doesn't look good on me. 
When you're in a dressing room, you put it on, you love it, you get it home and you hate it, there's a reason why. And I'm going to share that with you next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. So stay tuned, like and subscribe to my YouTube. I'm going to put my um, channel in the comments. All you have to do is click on it. Mwah. Love you all. Good night. Bye.